that being said, I'd like to uh, call the meeting to order. And if you can proceed with the roll call, that would be great. Each member is acknowledging that they, yep. Each member is acknowledging that they are attending the meeting via Zoom and that they are located in Wayne County, Michigan, unless otherwise stated when I call your name. Member Winton? Here. Member Tinsley Smith? Member Tally has requested an excuse. Member Starr? Here. Member Scheel? Here. Member Randall? Present. Member Luckman? Here. Member Lanto? Here. Member Joyner? Here. Member Hughes? Here. Member Gator? Present. Member Garcia? Member English Barnhill? Present. Member Douglas has requested an excuse. <laughs> Member Dobb? Here. Uh, Member Crawford, as indicated by the chair, will be in and out, but is Member Crawford here right now? Yes, I am, thank you. Mm -hmm. Present. Member Cash? Here. Vice Chair Roberts? Present. Chair Carter? <clears throat> Chair Carter? I know she's here. <laughs> Did we lose her? Oh, it looks like we lost her. She's no longer on the on the call. I know she was having connection issues. Um, Vice Chair Roberts, do we want to give her a minute and see if she logs back on? Sure. I also see Commissioner Tinsley Smith is here. Okay, thank you. While we're waiting, um, Vice Chair Roberts, do you want to just briefly go over the procedure for um, if you're going to be absent and, and what to do to request an excuse? Sure. And Gabby, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you know you're unable to attend a meeting, if you can just email Gagney and Chair Carter and just letting them know um, that you're just not able to make the meeting and ask for an excused absence. Thank you. Um. Do we just want to proceed? We just need to approve the minutes and then we can go into our presentation. I see Chair uh, Carter is on the line. I don't know if okay, she's right. did. She's back. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Vice Chair Roberts, for filling in that way. But yes, I'm having technical difficulties. I do believe it is with my system again. Um, so bear with me. I want to um, first say good afternoon to everyone now that the Roll call has been completed and I can actually see who is here. Thank you so much. And I welcome you back as we had difficulties last um, last meeting. And um, we have a, a quite a, a, a lineup um, today and I'm really excited about our guests. So we did uh, approve the meetings for the minutes for the last meeting of August the 12th, am I correct? No, we haven't done that yet. We just completed roll call and we do have a quorum. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Can we uh, get a motion to approve the August 12th meeting minutes, please? I'll make that motion, Winton. Support. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So we have presentations. Chair Carter, you have to call all those in favor. Okay, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Yes, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those that may oppose, say nay. All right, having uh, not heard uh, any negative response, we'll accept the meeting as presented. Our, is our guest here? Uh, 
Ms. Cheryl Bergman, the Executive Director and Commissioner Charity Dean of the Michigan Women's Commission. Are you present? Yes, present. Okay, all right. And I didn't hear Cheryl or, or Commissioner. Cheryl's here. And here. Present for the purpose of those for those purposes that for those who may be on the telephone who may not be able to see who is speaking, if, if you could just um, say your name, especially for our guests because uh, you're here for the first time. We want to make sure that uh, we're making the connection correctly. So, um, with no further ado, uh, what's going to happen here is that each of our professionals that are here today. A special, very special guest. They're going to kind of introduce themselves and tell you about what they are, are doing for the state of Michigan and uh, in the by way of uh, making the lives of women better for the state of Michigan. We're going to proceed first with, um, again, Ms. Cheryl Bergman, Executive Director of the State of Michigan Women's Com Committee. You can proceed. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having us um, here today. It's great to see you all. Um, I'm Cheryl Bergman again. I am the executive director of the Michigan Women's Commission. Um, I am here with Charity Dean, Commissioner Dean, who is a commissioner with the Michigan Women's Commission, and she'll talk to you in just a minute. Um, I just want to say how excited I am about the Wayne County Women's Commission um, and all of you participating and congratulations on your appointments. It's really exciting. And I'm excited to stand shoulder to shoulder with all of you raising awareness of the issues that Michigan women face and Wayne County women face and raising awareness and creating solutions together. Um, I, I'm so excited about that and thank Commissioner Bell Chairwoman Bell and Commissioner Melissa Daub and Women's Commission Vice Chair Sarah Roberts for their vision and uh, to put together this Wayne County Women's Commission and make it a reality. Um, I've always known from a very young age instinctively and maybe also through experience that women, when women lead our families and our communities thrive. And now I, as I grow up, data supports that. Uh, belief and that instinct that I've always felt I've known. And I spent my career up to this point, I was appointed by Governor Whitmer to uh, lead the Women's Commission in 2019. But up until then, I spent my time mainly working to elect women to leadership positions. So I have worked with Senator Debbie Stabenow when she was first elected to the United States Senate as Michigan's first female U.S. Senator. I worked with uh, Governor Granholm to help elect her both uh, the first time and her reelection as our first female governor of Michigan. And I also helped to elect uh, Governor Whitmer, our current female governor. So now I am uh, tr trying my hand in a different arena, which is raising awareness and the policy arena um, to help the women of Michigan. So a little bit about the Michigan Women's Commission, um, we were created by statute in 1968. And the mission of the commission is to survey the women of Michigan, identify problems they face, make policy recommendations to address those issues and to recognize the achievements of women in Michigan. So like I said, when I started in this position in late 2019, um, we held conversations with women around the state, including in Detroit. Maybe some of you were there. It was in late January, 2020, when we were in Detroit. And um, we, everywhere we went, from Detroit to Traverse City to Grand Rapids to Flint, the top concerns of women in Michigan were economic security issues. The very top of those concerns were affordable, accessible childcare, pay equity, paid leave, Etc. And just more women in leadership across the board. Michael, thanks so yeah. much for calling me back. And um, 
what, like I said, they, we learned that the priorities were economic security issues. And this was before the pandemic. And then we were shut down and the pandemic hit. And just to give you a little data of how this has affected the women in the state of Michigan, the pandemic, um, the Department of Management and Budget in the state released a report on Michigan women in the workforce this March, so late March. At that time, approximately 136,000 women in Michigan had left the workforce entirely. They've been updating that number monthly. And as of July, that number had increased to 203,000 women who have left the workforce entirely. It also showed that women are four times more unemployed than men post pandemic. And um, a couple other things, women are 14% uh, of women in Michigan live be below the poverty level, uh, poverty line. 11% uh, of men live below the poverty line and a one in four people earning $100,000 or more in 2019 were women. So only one out of four people earning $100,000 or more in 2019 were women. So those are the, some of the data points that this report showed us. And all of this, we know childcare and we can tell anecdotally and with some data that women are dropping out of the workforce in large part due to the childcare. And this was an issue before the pandemic, we know it. Maybe one of the good things about the pandemic, it is, has shown a light on this issue. And now our employers and our business community and our legislators and our policymakers are starting to talk about childcare and solutions for childcare in a way that it's not just a issue for families, but it's an economic issue for the state of Michigan. So, I guess we can say that might be some good news from, from the pandemic. So after we had those, those conversations around the state and identified the priorities of the women in the state, we created, the Women's Commission created our initiatives that we're working on and created our uh, working groups, working committees that were uh, identify, or working on all of these issues. And the first one of those is unlocking opportunities, which removes barriers to work for women and childcare is the main barrier that we've identified <clears throat> and have been working on childcare issues. And one of the things that came out of that is the My TriShare Childcare Pilot Program that the Michigan Women's Commission is implementing in three regions of the state. Um, the idea of the program is that the employer shares a third of the cost, the employee pays, shares a third of the cost, and the state of Michigan shares a third of the cost. The, we launched this pilot in mid-April. Um, uh, if you look at our website, you can see the reports that have come out on this. And like I said, it's in three regions. It is the currently in Muskegon, uh, Northwest Lower Peninsula, and the Great Lakes Bay region. We do expect to expand the pilot to Detroit in the near, maybe within the next four to six weeks with some private foundation funding. And the governor has recommended that uh, in the FY 2022 budget that's currently being negotiated an expansion through the state of the pilot. So in the next couple of months, we could, it, could increase the pilot from three regions to approximately eight or nine regions in the state. So we're pretty excited about that. And that's just one innovative public-private partnership to address the child care issue. Um, we obviously need to prop up our providers and offer them support and living wages being one of those main concerns. Um, and the governor has recommendations in the budget, uh, FY 2022 budget to do that as well and to increase subsidy for families. Um, we have our financial freedom committee which addresses pay equity and access to higher wage jobs. Yesterday was Native Women Equal Pay Day. Um, in August was Black Women Equal Pay Day. March was Women Overall Equal Pay Day. And Latina Equal Pay Day isn't until October. So it'll be Latina women in our state or in the country need to work until October to make the same amount of money that white men made in the beginning of the year in January. The Visible Authentic Leadership Committee is uh, working on 
increasing the number of women in leadership across the state in all areas, nonprofits, academia, uh, elected. Um, so any area that you can think of. And one of the projects that we're working on right now, we partnered with Michigan State University's Gender Center and the Institute for Public Policy and Social Research at MSU to collect data on the number of women who are elected at local levels. We don't have that data. The Center for American Politics at the University of Rutgers compiles the data for state legislatures and they have started uh, collecting that data from uh, municipal local elected. So Michigan, we have 38% of our legislature currently is female. 35.7% of our municipal elected uh, leaders are, and this is in uh, cities that have a population of 10,000 10, or more people in, the, in Michigan, 35.7%. And county commissions, and this is what Michigan State uh, just finished collecting this data, and they're currently compiling it, but I have some data points on county commissions, 27% of our elected county commissioners in Michigan are female. Mm. Wayne County is ahead of that. You guys are bringing up the bar because you have 40% of your commissioners are female in Wayne County. And you have the incredible leadership of Commissioner Bell, Chairwoman Bell, leading your commission. So you're, you're raising the bar for the state of Michigan and county commissions. And the next thing that Michigan State University is gonna look at and start gathering data on our elected school board members. And our whole idea of this is so that we can amplify the fact that we need more women. Wouldn't it be great if we had at least 50%, which you know, women are, are half of our population, a little more than half of our population representing us. So to amplify this information and help identify and, and get more women to run for office and for these elected offices and it builds a pipeline for our state legislature, et cetera, it's a snowball effect. So we're working on collecting that data right now. And then finally, we have our committee on implicit bias awareness. And this is a committee we created to ensure, almost like an oversight committee, to ensure that we, in any of our policy recommendations, we are aware of and looking at any implicit bias in those policy recommendations. And we also, as an outward uh, education tool, we have we launched last year the 21-Day Racial Equity Challenge and a learning cohort that goes along with that challenge. So far, we've had about 350 women go through that challenge. And this challenge was created, the 21-Day Racial Equity Challenge. Some of you may have, be familiar with it, that the um, Michigan League for Public Policy created that challenge and promoted that challenge. So we partnered with them to use their, their materials for the challenge. The one thing that we've added is at the end of each week of the challenge, we have a cohort, a learning cohort virtually of no more than 25 women who can get together and led by one of our commissioners to talk about what they learned, what they read, what they saw that, that week in the 21 day racial equity challenge. And it's been, uh, it's uh, like I said, about 350 women have gone through that program. So that is it in a nutshell. There are a few other things going on. I'd be happy to take questions, but I know that you wanna hear from Charity as well. So um, I will stop there. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, I think there's a hand raised. How should we do this? Let's go ahead and take um, maybe two questions while it's fresh um, um, right after her speech, and then we'll take more questions perhaps following your presentation. Whose hand is up? I can't really see. Clerk, can you? It's Com Commissioner Daub, Madam Chair. Um, all right, I have a bunch of questions, so I'm going to try and pick the <laughs> most important ones that I wanted to ask. Um, okay, so um, do you, what advice do you have for us um, as we are, you know, the first group of women establishing the Wayne County Women's Commission? Well, what advice do I have? I, 
I would say it sounds like you've got a, a really good start um, on kind of establishing how your commission is going to work and establishing rules, et cetera. And you've got representation from all over the county, right? Each, each of the commissions. So my advice would be to somehow survey the women in each of the, your commission districts to find out what it is that you need to address and what are the most pressing needs right now. That would be one. It really worked out well for us um, when we had those conversations and we were really intentional about including, when we went to a region, we were really intentional about including a diverse group of women so that we heard from all voices and not just the elected officials there, et cetera, but women on the ground, moms, families, et cetera. Um, so I would make sure that you're talking to everybody, representatives of everyone in the, all the women in the county, um, wherever they are. Okay, great. Thank you. And then um, how um, do you have any, do you do any special work? Um, and maybe it's not a formal committee, but do you do any special work on issues facing trans women? We have not yet um, dove into any of that. We are, you know, we have in some of our conversations that we had with women across the state that those issues did come up. Some of the issues that trans women face. So we are, we certainly wouldn't shy away from any of those um, okay. conversations. Okay. And I'm just yeah. gonna uh, cheat and ask one more question. <laughs> um, I just wanna ask how, how can we follow the work that the Women's Commission is doing? Do you, can we go on the website? Is there an email subscription or is there social media that we can follow just so we can keep up to date on what you're doing? Yes, all of the above. And so our, our um, website, michigan.gov backslash MWC has a description of all of our committees and the work that we're doing. Uh, we'll have our meeting minutes. We just had a public meeting in August. So our meeting minutes from that meeting will be up soon. Um, and we have our uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. So we're up on all of those things as well. And I was going to suggest that for our future collaboration between the Michigan Women's Commission and the Wayne County Women's Commission, if you might consider sending someone to our public meetings, which are quarterly, and I'll share those dates with all of you, send a representative to our meetings where there's a public comment section so that you can talk about what you're working on in Wayne County. So we keep up to date on that. I mean, besides our, you know, other conversations we'll have internally and off, off that, but it's on public record and it will go into our minutes and then be published on our website. Okay, that would be great. Are you guys meeting on it's, Zoom still or are you in person? Excuse me, excuse me. Let, let, let's, um, I, I don't want to be rude, but I do want us to keep moving. Um, that information, if, you, if she can share that with us via email, Sure. I, there was another hand up, and I want to recognize that person for a quick question and then move to our next speaker because it's like uh, half past the hour now. And I want to make sure we get everything in. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Cheryl, for that great information. Appreciate that. We'll be following up with you for sure. But go ahead, um, Wayne County Commissioner, that was um, about to do her. Her introduction, if you can proceed, and now that would be great. Is she still there? Uh, hello. Here. Hi, everyone. Okay, thank uh, you. Yeah. Um, it, it, so it's interesting. Um, a lot of the things that I was going to talk about, um, Director Bergman already mentioned, so I won't be before you long, but I just want to give a little bit of my perspective from being um, a commissioner of the Michigan Women's Commission. Um, one of the things that uh, I think is really important, and um, as you guys are forming the Wayne County uh, Women's Commission, um, one of the things that I really enjoy about being a commissioner um, is being able to have direct impact on what's happening in the state. And so um, I joined right after um, Director Bergman was appointed as the executive director. 
I was appointed um, in 2019 as well. And those listening sessions that we helped hosted um, around the state were really informative to the issues that were happening um, for women in our state. And I, I, hope, I helped to host the Detroit um, listening session. And it was really, um, it wasn't something that was rushed. It, we were very intentional about who we invited to make sure that we had a diverse set of women um, and then ask really open-ended questions. We had a trained facilitator to come in and ask questions so that we could really get the information um, that was on the hearts of women. And from that, uh, then we developed our committees. So the commission had had committees before, and then we developed our committees after we had held those listening sessions around the around the state. Uh, so the committee that I sit on is the Unlocking Opportunities Committee, and that's the one that's doing a lot of work around child care. And even though um, child care was one of the issues that came up in those uh, first listening sessions that we had and we had the governor come out, we also did a child care listening session, right? Um, where we said, okay, we know this is an issue, but let's dig a little bit deeper. And we did them virtually so that women um, from around the state could participate. Um, and then even in those sessions, we were able to dig deeper to listen, to understand what the issues were um, for, for the women around the state. I also was able to participate in the implicit um, bias training that uh, Director Bergman talked about, the 21 day equity, racial equity challenge. And to be honest, that came from our first listening sessions. Um, and you know, one of our other commissioners uh, from Grand Rapids can really talk about this, but apparently at one of the listening sessions at Grand Rapids, in Grand Rapids, there were a, a number of women of color that gave a lot of very honest feedback to, um, to the Michigan Women's Commission about um, ways in which they felt not in not involved. And, and, and speaking as a black woman, a lot of times we can we have to be very careful when we talk about women's issues because a lot of times, and just from a, a, a black woman's perspective, when you hear, oh, this is a women's issue, you think white women because for so long um, in our country, that's actually what it meant, right? When you say, oh, we got the right to vote in you know, 1921, well, black women actually you know, did it. And so you have to really think about um, you know, how are we being inclusive and how are we being equitable, even when we're going about the work of women, because naturally we think this is the work of equity and that's true, um, but sometimes we have to dig even deeper. And so from that conversation um, in Grand Rapids, we thought, okay, we need to do even more work. And so that's where the 21 uh, Racial Equity Day um, sessions came. Um, and we were able to, to get um, hundreds of women around the state to participate in that. That's huge. And that 21 day racial equity count challenge is not, is not watered down at all. It is, very, it is very intense. It is very challenging, um, but it's very important. And I think it's something that, you know, that I would recommend even for the, the commissioners first and then to, to open it up to folks in Wayne County. Um, and we were able to do that for free. So women could participate for free. They didn't have to pay. Um, and I, I really enjoyed that. Um, the one thing that I'll say is that um, we live in a time where we've made so much progress as a country and as a state, but we still have so much, so, so much more to go. Um, not even, you know, in um, positions of leadership, when we're talking about pay equity, um, when you think about the number of women that have left the workforce and why that is, um, and, and the ways in which we view women as a society, um, who is the primary caretaker? You know, when do we get to the point where um, if something like a pandemic happens, equally men and women are exiting the, 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 the workforce. And so we have a long way to go. We made a tremendous amount of progress, but we have a long way to go. And so having a women's commission um, to really dig deep and deal with these specific issues um, and be able to utilize multiple means to create solutions um, is a very powerful thing. So we might be meeting with um, state reps and state senators um, on one issue, but then we might be hosting a forum in another. And so um, really the possibilities are endless to crafting solutions for women. And I just wanna say one, thank you for having me and congratulations to establishing the Wayne County Women's Commission. That's it. I think there are questions, but Madam Chair, I think you're on mute. Yes, uh, thank you so much for, for that um, perspective. I love exactly uh, what you have said and what 
um, executive director Bergman has said it's been very powerful. I'd like to open it up and um, have some questions. Um, and please keep your questions to, to something that is, is not uh, readily available online or somewhere else just so we can get the powerful part of it in and those who are listening and, and viewing can get the biggest punch out of what you're saying today. Thanks again. And if you can raise your hand, whether you're on the phone or here in the session, please let it be known at this time. We you gotta have we have hands okay. from um, Member Dobb as well as Vice Chair Roberts. I believe Member Dobb was first. Madam Chair, do you want me to answer my question? Yes. Ask my question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, uh, Charity, I, I'm really interested in what you were speaking about with um, the, the 21 ra uh, days of racial equity. Um, because I have heard a, and I've read a lot about how white women can truly be allies and, um, and I'm not sure if, if other members of the commission have heard the, um, how a white woman's tears are the most dangerous thing, um, or how, you know, uh, white women try to do something, but we're, we're not really, we're not really listening to black women. Um, and I really would love to explore that, um, that issue. And I've just, I've just never really been sure. So, you know, I, I always try and listen and learn. Um, but I'm always, I'm never sure if I'm doing it right. So would you say that this program, the 21 um, racial equity program would be something to, to work that out? Um, so the, the first thing I'll say is it takes a lifetime to work that out. So it's not something you can read or participate in and then you got it. Um, and so part of the biggest, the biggest step is understanding that this is a life it's a lifetime, like it, you, you will spend the rest of your life learning and listening and on a path to like really being an ally. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's also okay to say, I don't know. Um, and, and, and so that's the first thing. I, I do recommend the 21 day racial equity um, challenge as a tool, but full disclosure, even for me as a facilitator, it was a lot. Um, one, I, I'm still learning, right? There, there. Everyone has biases. Everyone has privileges, and so you know, I, I, I have to, you know, um, remember that. But for me, being a facilitator, it was, it, it became really heavy for me, um, partially because I did, I had a group of white women, and it was a lot. Just, it, you know, being honest, but it was really good too. It was good, but it was emotional, and it was a lot. So I think part of that is. Um, one, acknowledging like I have bias, I have privilege and I wanna do something about it. And also I know that I'm not gonna be an expert. I'm just gonna spend the rest of my life learning about that and making that commitment is like, that puts you light years ahead <laughs> anyways, right? If you can just say that I have bias, I have privilege, it's gonna take me a lifetime uh, to learn really how to be a, a real ally and then just committing to the work, right? Um, and so you guys can do that in a number of ways, but I, I would say always have caution. I mean, we talk about this with the Women's Commission too. Don't lean on your black um, women to be the, your only teachers or that put that extra burden on them because that becomes overwhelming, right? If I, if I am um, um, not only the victim of racism, but I have to be the solution too. So there are so right, right. many. Yeah, it's not your job to teach me. It's my job to learn. And, but it's but it's a challenge. But 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 what we how can we do this together, right? How can yeah. I be honest with you and you be honest with me? Um, and it is something that just is not going to happen with one session. Um, but it's you just have to commit to living your life, um, being comfortable with being uncomfortable, and mm -hmm. you'll get there. Yeah. So is this um, is this challenge something that we could do here in our commission in the in the women's commission or something that we could implement in Wayne County is there yeah. a, you know, a format that we could use I think well and director Bergman can help me with this we the so I've done this challenge multiple times so my previous job so currently I'm the executive director of the Metro Detroit Black Business Alliance before that I was a civil rights director for the city of Detroit 
we did it at the city of Detroit too. And I've seen it done several different ways. I really like the way that we did it with the uh, Women's Commission. And so I'm sh we're happy to share our templates, but you need someone dedicated to, so we, you know, we, we've got uh, Director Cheryl and we also have um, another staff member that helped really facilitate this. You really need someone full-time to delegate to make sure the facilitators have, facilitators have what they need. Um, but yes, it's something that can be done. And I think we have the format to share. Okay, yep. absolutely. Right. We'd be happy to do that. Okay, wonderful. Um, that was all I had to, oh, oh, one more question. Um, so the sessions that you did, were they recorded for, for us, for anyone to watch? For the 21 day ratio? Yeah. No, no, and I don't recommend recording them. You want to be able to have a place of, um, intimacy and where people can feel like they're, they can be themselves and share. So yeah. I, I, no, they weren't recorded and I wouldn't recommend okay. recording them. Okay. Got it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have another Thanks. hand from uh, Vice Chair Roberts. Hi, thank you so much. So first, just a quick comment. Thank you so much, Cheryl and uh, Commissioner Dean for taking time out of your very busy schedules to come and, and present and talk with us today. But I wanted to make sure that all the members of the Wayne County Women's Commission know that when um, Chairwoman Bell and I uh, started working to put a like creation committee together to, to create this women's commission, Cheryl was a part of that initial committee to help build this. And she's just uh, fantastic. She was at every meeting and really helped us put and create this whole commission. So I just want to make sure that everyone knows that. And Cheryl, I just want to thank you, you know, publicly for your time, effort, and dedication in helping make this a reality and helping to ensure that we're successful. And uh, Commissioner Dean, can you talk a little bit about like when you were appointed, how long your terms last? And for you personally, as someone who was appointed you know, by the governor, like how do you see or how do you approach this work and how you believe you can be the most helpful in continuing to make the Michigan Women's Commission um, effective and impactful? Well, that's a lot of questions. Okay, I'll turn it. Um, no, no, it's fine. I, I'll say this. I um, was extremely honored first to be appointed by the governor to the commission. I didn't know much about the commission when I joined, so I did a lot of research. Um, and so, so, you know, especially, so, so I'll say that I was, I was really honored. I, I take it very seriously as well. So, you know, when we were, especially because I'm, I'm a Detroit, I'm like, you know, the way that the commission is set up, they're folks representing different areas and I'm one of the Detroit commissioners. So anything in Detroit, I want to make sure that um, I'm very much involved and I'm, you know, utilizing my network um, to help get the word out about the work of the commission. Um, so, you know, help, I helped to put together the listening party that we did, uh, the listening session that we did in Detroit for the governor. And really, um, I'm also a part of an organization called the Detroit Women's Leadership Network, uh, which is a, it's a, it's a phenomenal group. It's on Facebook. If you're not in it, you should join it. Um, but we've got about 9,000 women in there. And um, so we really utilize, leverage that network to help the commission. So, you know, when I'm a part of anything, I, I always want to know, you know, what can I, what do I bring here to the table? And so one of the things I wanted to bring was my network, um, but also um, because I was at the city at the time, there was just a lot of, um, a lot of things I can bring from the implicit bias, you know, uh, training, um, just to really uh, round out the work. I, I, my term ends, I believe, in 2023, um, but I could be wrong. <laughs> so Director Berg is going to have to tell me what my term is. I think it ends in 2023. Um, and it, but it, it's been really fun, too, especially pre-pandemic, being able to travel um, to different parts of the state. Um, it is really great, um, but I do, I do take it very seriously, and you know I I feel like my job as a commissioner um, is to utilize my my network, my resources, my experience, my expertise to bring that to the commission, so that we really do have a well-rounded 
um, a well-rounded commission. So as a black woman, I'm always going to, I'm going to be the one that raises my hand to say that because that's why I believe I'm there. So I have to use my unique experience and my unique um, background to contribute to the commission so that we can really be a well-rounded one. Thank you so much. We do have one more question from um, member Lanto. If you're done, sorry, Vice Chair Roberts, were you done? Yes, thank you so much, Kegney. Yep. Thank you. Thank you both so much for speaking with us this afternoon. Um, my question is for Commissioner Dean. You've mentioned a little bit about how you reached out to the women that you represent, um, but can you talk a little bit more about maybe the more informal ways that you really get their input and their perspectives to inform what you bring to your Michigan meetings? Yeah, I mean, so specifically around child care, um, that's the committee that I, I sit on the Unlocking Opportunities uh, Committee for the Michigan Women's Commission. And so um, we, so first, you know, the kind of more formal way, we hosted a listening session um, about uh, how people are navigating child care. And this was during, like, during the height of the pandemic. So we wanted to know how they were navigating it. But we also did a survey because we knew everyone was not going to be able to attend the listening session. So we asked some key questions and then we share that out and then just really informally talking to other women who are moms you know um how are you doing this what are you doing um and being able to to get that information and, and to bring it back to the um to the committee i think you know whenever we join boards or commissions um, a lot of times you're chosen because of your like who you are right and so you know you don't we don't i don't turn off charity ever so i'm always going to be the, the issues that i'm passionate about on, the, on this commission or on any other board are, are usually going to be issues that are that i'm talking about um, in my day-to-day -day life and so as i'm engaging in in the, those types of conversations with friends and family i'm also bringing that expertise and, and that those experiences with me um, to the commission. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any more questions of either of our guests? Again, thank you to both of you. Oh, you uh, Member Douglas has her hand raised. Oh, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. I um, just want to say thank you so much to both uh, Director Bergman and Commissioner Dean for your presentations and your insights today. It's been very helpful for me and I'm sure it has been for the other women on the commission. And I just wanted to ask and not belabor the issue. Uh, there's two things that I had. One was regarding the facilitator that came in to talk to you all to help you focus on what, um, you wanted the commission to do, be, and grow into. Can you talk a little bit about that? And then the second one was, and I'm gonna ask them both together so that you can just continue so we can save some time. So the other one was about the um, equity challenge. We did that in our community. We had about a hundred participants. And then we followed that up with infinity groups for three months to continue the discussion about what we learned um, about ourselves and about our community. And it worked out really well. Um, and so I, I was just wanting to ask you if, if you did something like that afterwards. Um, and that's my questions. <laughs> so um, for the facilitator, we used a woman named Naima Wade. She, um, it, I mean, we had, a, I think a couple to choose from. And I think I just actually gave them the Cheryl. Cheryl, I don't know how Cheryl picked the the final facilitator, but uh, and actually no, we had a different facilitator at each listening session. So I think we picked a, a woman that was local. Is that right, Director Bergman? Yeah. That's correct. Um, we had we used for the we had a total of six listening sessions um, around the state before the pandemic shut us down. And we used, I think, three different facilitators, depending on who was available. And then we also, Naima, uh, Naima facilitated our, after we were done with all the sessions, we had a strategy day, retreat day with the whole commission. And Naima came in and facilitated our strategy day for us. So really helped us think through, okay, what did you learn from these conversations? What do you need to address and, and what buckets do we put these in? What kind of, uh, you know, initiatives do we need to create and, and work? So 
I found it incredibly helpful to have a professional facilitator in all of these conversations and at our strategy session. So I would, I would highly recommend that if you go along these kind of route, this route. Um, and then on the equity piece, when we, so what we were doing, and I don't know if we actually did it. So what I know is the, the, the 20 day equity facilitation that I was a part of was a public, it was for the public. So we had that open to women um, in Michigan. If you were a woman in Michigan and you wanted to do something, if you wanted to participate, you could. So that was one of the kind of things that we did kind of public facing. Um, we haven't done any group sessions after that, um, but that was, it wasn't necessarily for like a group that's working together ongoing. So you really had a, a wide range of people. So women met each other actually, even through that process, because they may have just seen it and signed up. And so you would have had women from Flint that was in there with women from Howe. And so it was, um, it was really something that we did for the, for the women of the state. Great, great. All right, so thank you both again. It's been a wealth of information that you both have provided. and I can't wait to reach out to either of you based on some of your comments, especially about the rules and the, uh, and the survey particularly. We've had some conversation about surveying our particular district and knowing more intimately uh, where we don't uh, about what the needs are in, the, in this changing world of uh, pandemic. So um, thank you for that. And, and I, the, as far as the, the 21 days equity session, I'd like, I'd like to learn more about that as well. So off record, I, I will reach out to both of you. I did speak with um, um, Executive Director Bergman just a little bit this morning. We talked about the fact that there is some funding coming down for those who may be underemployed with childcare issues. And so we're looking forward to getting that information from her to share because ultimately what we want to do is to be able to to measure uh, are we reaching the people in our district are we reaching the people in the state of Michigan and hopefully that's a um, project that we can work on together and explore how we can expand it and get the word out because the, as she mentioned some of the funds are already available and some are coming down the pipeline and using the outreach that we already have through social media and our media and all kind of context that we've accumulated over years it's going to be important to share all good information everyone has a different reach and there's some overlapping that's fine but sharing of information and working together um, is going to take us a long way and um, that is is my final comment. If you wanted to give us a one minute or half a minute wrap up, each of you, starting with um, uh, Executive Director Bergman, then we can move on uh, to the other things on our agenda. And get, again, thank you so much. It's been tremendous uh, information that you've provided and will make a difference with um, our Women's Commission, I do believe here in Wayne County. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you for your leadership, uh, Chairwoman and Chairwoman Bell for the whole entire Wayne County Commission. And uh, we're excited to work together. We've got um, ideas on how we can collaborate and want to continue to talk about those. And perhaps we can uh, work on getting some other women's commissions going around the state. And we will really be a force to reckon with. <laughs> they got to listen to us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I'll, I'll just say this, when I see what's happening in Texas, um, it just, it, it really um, reminds me how important this work is um, in Michigan. And so I agree wholeheartedly with uh, Director Sherrill that um, you guys are, you know, Wayne County, is, you know, you're leaders anyway, right? And so you're leading the state here and hopefully we can do this uh, around the state um, to really maximize our impact. But I just wanna say thank you for inviting uh, me and my, I put my email in the chat. And uh, if you need anything, don't, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. And thank you. All right, let's give them a hand. <laughs> give them a hand to show our appreciation. Since we all can't necessarily speak, but um, again, thanks. All right, so we're gonna move on to our the next item. And you guys are invited to stay if you like to stay. However, we're gonna uh, move on to um, any unfinished business and, and none is listed. So we're going 
going to move on to any new business. We're moving to item F, new business. Is, um, uh, oh, sorry. Big part. <laughs> Moving on to new business is I miss is member Crawford on the line. Okay, so she may have an yes. announcement when she comes back. You are here. Yes. Okay. If you want to at this time, new business. Okay. Just a moment. Thank you very. Thank you very much. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Yes, I was uh, thinking of some ideas. I spoke to Chair Carter as well as uh, Vice Chair Robert about how we could all get together in one phenomenal space um, in the social distancing world, but to actually have a mix and mix and mingle mixer uh, for all of us to come together in a neutral location and one. Um, the first one is proposed for the mix and mingle for two possible dates of October 15th or October 22nd, which are both Fridays, um, which will be from 5.30 p.m. to about 8.30, no longer than 9 p.m. Um, at a location. Uh, looking for a few members who will be interested uh, in assisting with that wonderful creation so that we can have something on our books before the conclusion of this year. Uh, you can, I can reach out to you or you can reach out to me via call or text uh, so that we can connect and so that we can set up some dates so we can deliver this great information to, um, to the rest of the body. Uh, one of the great ideas is because we are so diverse and from different areas, depending on what city you're from, we would like for you to bring something that represents your city. So if you're from Dearborn, what does Dearborn represent? If you're from Canton, what does Canton represent? Um, if you're from Detroit, we already know what that represents. It's either Fago, Better May, Verners, you know, just something that's fun, that's talking pieces, talking points um, at our mix and mingles uh, so that it can represent us as women as we move forward. Uh, and then it will also help us to connect so that we can have everyone ready and able to participate so that we can uh, tackle some of these issues in regards to women in the community and in the city of Detroit as well as throughout the state. Uh, that's the first one. But the second one that we're also gonna uh, look into is a holiday celebration, ladies and gents. Well, I guess I'm, I'm not sure we're gonna open up to the gentlemen, but a, a wonderful year end holiday celebration. Um, and we're looking at those dates, which will be later on probably discussed in October or November, but December 10th or December 17th. We're going to try to get together and lock down a, a location. Again, that's uh, in a neutral area. The goal is, you know, to have all of our members not drive no more than uh, 45 minutes to an hour from their, you know, homes or their spaces, but to have a place that is like indoor, outdoor, uh, we know that the weather is getting a little bit more chillier and colder, but either way, we want to be able to have a great time so that we can connect and bring this woman, a women's commission to be a force to reckon with, to let the uh, state know that we are here and we are ready to move together in a strong manner. So that's all I have as far as suggestions. So again, inbox me, text me. Um, my telephone number is uh, 313. 673-3856. Again, that's 313-673-3856. If you're interested, I would love to have a list ready to present by Monday, by noon Monday, so that I can get to uh, Chair Carter uh, and so that she can get it out so that we can get on this as soon as possible. We really, really want to try to lock down a location for the October Mix and Mingle as soon as possible. And then if you're interested with the holiday portion, let me know too, so that we can get that going and we can start getting that committee because we know that the holiday celebration is going to take a little bit more time and effort. Uh, and we're not sure of budget, but we do know that we're the main focus, the first focus will be about the holiday, excuse me, the main focus will be about the quick mix and mingle. And 
we're not going to have to, you know, I think this is something that's going to be an impromptu uh, pay as we go. We'll talk about that more, but the holiday celebration, we'll get more details about that at a later date. Does that sound okay, Chair Carter? That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, the, the purpose of it, the mixer, okay. or, or the icebreaker, if you will, or the in-person interaction is so that we can really get to know each other and, and this could help uh, us uh, to be able to, to move easier and get comfortable with reaching out to each other. So hopefully it can serve that purpose. We won't talk business at that particular meeting, but it's just simply to, to know who, who, who's in the room with us, so to speak, because we kind of lose each other with the video thing. But again, if you we, we do urge you, especially those who may not be active on a committee or have not been active on a committee, we do need you. We do need you to, to sign up and, and volunteer so that um, we can get the work done. We can get a lot done if everybody um, participates in some way. So thank you again, Dom. Um, Member Crawford. And thank you. Thank you as well. All right. So we're going to move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the updates from the ad hoc committees. I want to first um, ask the, the chair, Lugman, to talk about... Um, where we are and just give us a brief update at this time. Um, so good afternoon, can you all hear me okay? Yes. Hi, um, I hope you're all doing really well. Thank you for the presentations. Um, so I just wanted to give a brief update. Um, I am the chair of the uh, committee revolving around the core values, mission um, and vision of the Wayne County Women's Commission. Um, so within the past uh, week or so, or maybe about 10 days, I did um, send out emails to everyone, if you could check those if you haven't, just kind of trying to brainstorm some ideas and make it more inclusive so that everyone gets a chance to kind of give their input on what they think should be highlighted as we, you know, develop these mission statements um, or these value statements. And then for um, the ladies that are on the committee, you should have each received an email, a separate email as well, um, just to kind of try to coordinate a time for us to, to meet and, um, you know, finalize, you know, creating the mission and the vision statement. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at as of now. Uh, if you have any questions, you have any input, please go ahead and let us all know. Thanks. We do have a hand from Member Gator. Yes, uh, thank you so much through the chair and to uh, Chair Luckman. Uh, per your direction, I, I felt it was important to state that I went ahead and created a Google Doc uh, for those on this mission, core values, um, and beliefs committee to begin sharing ideas. That way, when we do meet, uh, we're not just starting from scratch, that those have had the opportunity to share some ideas as well. Um, and if you guys have not received that email through Google Docs, please let me know. Thank you for um, taking initiative on that, um, um, Commissioner Gator. Um, so that was actually a really great suggestion because I had sent out an email and so the emails were starting to come in. Um, but uh, um, Madam Gator had suggested we create a shared Google Drive and that was great. So thank you for taking initiative to do that. If you haven't received an email, please reach out to she or I or both of us and just let us know so that you can have access to that. Absolutely, thank you so much. Okay. All right. If that concludes your report, Chair Lugman. Yeah. That, all right. Thank you so much. I want to encourage you guys to keep moving forward. You um, got a big job there. So do take take the time you need. Let's let's get it right. So uh, with the structure there, with the Google Docs, I think that that will make a difference. So. Guys, keep moving, and um, I'm I'm in support of what you do and how you do it. So just going to be patient. All right, um, all right. So we're going to talk about the next committee, um, the strategic planning process. Well, it shouldn't be this facility is to facilitate. As, well, I didn't notice that they changed the name of this committee. Is it the, the strategic planning process by? What is the name of this uh, this new committee name? 
this is this correct or just as a um this is correct this is what we changed it to at our last meeting it's reflected in the meeting minutes okay so i know the work the work process um was not there so but it, i guess that's not important but i do want to say that uh, because uh chair Crawf crawford i'm not sorry uh chair randall has uh, done this work before i i didn't uh she did uh, volunteer to join this committee and i have approved uh, that or, or agreed, not approved, but agreed that that's a good idea since she has expressed that she has that um, expertise. And now that brings us to six people in that committee. So we're looking for one other person to send um, an email to uh, myself and Vice Chair Roberts as she is the, the chair of that committee to let us know if, if you're interested in joining that committee. And, um, and, and wanting to be in compliance with the having the odd number of members. So with that being said, I, we can move forward now and Chair Roberts, you can go ahead and make your report. Thank yeah, you. Th thank you so much. Um, so we are in the process of scheduling our first meeting. I have sent out a doodle poll to all of the members. Um, and I think I'm waiting to hear from one more member um, to get that meeting date, date nailed down. Um, and I've also been working on just reaching out and having one-on-one -on -one conversations with the members of the committee. So looking forward to uh, reporting out at our next meeting because we will certainly have had um, a meeting by then. All right, thank you so much. Thank Keep you. up. She is very busy on this commission. I want everybody to know that I do appreciate her input. She is in it to win it. So again, thank you, Chair, Vice Chair Roberts and Chair of the Strategic uh, Planning Process. That is very important uh, committee for us. And as it was uh, kind of iterated through our guests today, and um, I'm optimistic that with, um, us reaching out to the right people, we will come up with the right decision. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Chair Carter. So moving on to uh, the next item on our agenda, uh, G, such other matters as may be properly submitted before the board. If there's any other matters at this point that need to be brought to our attention, please make them now, whether you're on the phone or on the video, can you now make it known? Okay, so there's no other matters. All right, so now we're gonna ask for public comments. If anyone that's on a telephone or here on the video would like to have something to say, we'd love to hear it. We are looking for input, input and we need it. So if you could come forth now, that would be great. And uh, Chair Carter, I did not receive any emails. All right, thank you. Are there any public comments? Now is the time to join us and let us hear your feedback. Any suggestions, feedback, comments, announcements of any sort, information you think that may be helpful to us or women? All right. We do have a hand from uh, Vice Chair Roberts. Thank you so much. I just wanted to let all the members know that there was a little bit of communication about more interest in the 21 day racial equity challenge. So I'm happy to follow up with uh, Cheryl Bergman and see if we can get an invite to do that process for all the members of the commission. Well, sure, um, let's do that, but let's do that together, Vice Chair Roberts, okay? Hello? Oh, sure, yes. Okay, thank you. All right, was there someone else? All right. All right, because I did see someone, I'm gonna ask again, is any other public comment? All right, thank you. I did send all of the uh, committee members an invite to a COVID presentation that happens tonight. If you can, can make that um, time slot of, I think it's eight to nine o'clock tonight. Uh, there's 
There's some experts that uh, will be speaking about some of the effects of COVID-19, vaccinate, not vaccinate, and um, some of the, the problems that, uh, that are being discussed around the state, around the world about uh, the vaccination. It um, is one of the subject matters that we're looking at as a team. So perhaps uh, this could, could uh, stand to, to help us um, to help us kind of uh, see how we can with our ideas and how we can help women who may be affected by uh, residual issues of the pandemic. So that is, that is uh, it for me. And I want to thank everyone for, for being here today and commenting and, and being a part of this great women's team. I, I already feel that is great because of uh, things that are happening. So um, if we can now uh, ask for an emotion to adjourn the meeting, we can kind of wrap this up. It is now 108. So moved, Member Scheel. Support, Four. Member Go ahead, All right. All right, so all those in favor say A. Aye. 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 And all those opposed, opposed. All right, thank you. Let's have a great week. Thank, thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.